All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please check out some of my other videos and hit that subscribe button. Really appreciate it, it helps me out. Today's video, we're gonna be doing some lure restoration. For those of you who've been subscribed for a while, know that I own my own lure company. So I have a lot of experience painting, building, and designing different lures. Um, I will link that down in the description below if you wanna check out my website and buy some lures off me. But today, we have some old, crusty, dusty lures that I found on the riverbank. And I thought it might be a cool video to kind of restore these and get them back into service and go catch some trout on them. So I've got four lures here and they all kind of have their own issues going on. So we're gonna try to do our best to make these things look brand new again. Real quick, I'll go over each one of these just so you can see the condition that they're in and what we're working with. This first one here I think is gonna be one of the more easy ones to work with. This is, uh, it says it's a Les Davis one sixth ounce hot rod spoon. So it's still got a lot of the good nickel finish on there. It hasn't really corroded any. It's just the paint job is basically gone. The other spoon that we have here is pretty bad and I'm not sure what I'm gonna be able to even do with this, but it appears to be like an old daredevil spoon. Um, the back of it is pretty much roached. I mean, it's just almost black with rust. It's got a uh, brass front with a bright orange stripe, so we'll see what we can do with that. That one's pretty bad. The other two are spinners. One of these is a Vibrex spinner, um, so and it's actually not in bad shape. I could probably still use it the way it is. The hook's pretty rusted out, so we'd have to change that. It's just, it's just kind of beat up. It's been sitting in the water for quite a while, so. And then the last one is this nasty rooster tail that is real bad. There's no paint left on the body. Um, the feathers are shot. The clevis for the spinner is all bent to crap. And the actual blade isn't looking too good either. But I think we can fix it all. So we'll start out with these two spoons. Yeah, let's see what it does with this one. <coughs> I'm gonna feel it's not gonna be the same result. <laughs> Maybe we'll run it on the big wheel. All right, so this Les Davis spoon cleaned up real good. The paint was barely on there anymore, so it's kind of hit it with a wire brush. Uh, this Daredevil style spoon, I really had to grind it. The back, as you guys saw before, was pretty much black with rust. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to get it much more shinier than that. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time, but I might try to polish that with a Dremel a little bit. Front, you can actually see that the rust was so bad it, it actually affected the the hammered finish a little bit, but we grind it all that off and then we'll repaint that. We'll try to get this back to a little bit more shiny. So I think unfortunately for now, that's as shiny as we're gonna get the back of this. I don't have the polishing and uh, sanding pads that I really need to do this, so. It's probably as good as we're gonna get. It's still gonna catch fish, I'm sure.
All right, so with both of these spoons here, they're raw metal, and when you paint on raw metal, you're gonna have to use some type of primer. And because I'm only doing a couple of these, I'm just gonna use a rattle can, self-etching Rust-Oleum primer. The other thing I do is I take a Brillo pad and just scuff up, scuff up the surface that you're gonna be painting. And that also allows it to adhere better to that raw, shiny metal. So for this spinner here, the Vibrex, I thought about just leaving it that natural minnow head and kind of just touching it up, but I think I'm going to repaint it completely. Uh, I'm just going to sand it and give it a little bit of a different paint job. All right, so if you guys remember, this little one six ounce spoon used to be orange and white. Orange on the sides, white down the middle. So hopefully I can just put a little orange on the sides here. Yeah, that might be it right there. I think that's pretty close. There's a little bit of a depression there in that smaller spoon where it looked like maybe they had painted an eye or there was an eye in there. I'm gonna put a uh, 3D holographic eye in there. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of super glue. All right, so with this spoon, I think we're gonna do, I'm gonna try to do like a brown trout pattern on this. All right, so I've got the rooster tail body here and we're going to powder paint this in this hot pink um, and we are just going to heat it up in this powder paint right here, Protec, and it should be painted. Then we'll warm it up in the oven and set it. And on this, I think I'm gonna do like a half pink, half chartreuse color. Now the only professional way to do this would be to use like an automotive clear coat. And that's really the most durable. Um, there's a lot of prep work with that and everything. We're not gonna do that with these couple of spoons. And we're just gonna use this KBS Diamond Clear and let it cure for a little while, do a couple coats of that, we should be all set. All right, so the body for the rooster tail is all done, so I can start putting that back together. Um, I just used powder paint and then baked it in the oven to cure it. Um, the, old, the old one had, obviously, the rooster tail portion on there. I'm gonna tie up something that'll work, have a little feather there. So there's our new wire. And now we can assemble this. Pink weight on there. Put on this uh, glow bead that I got. And all that does is just keep the clevis from, it just helps it spin better. And I would say that we need a new clevis because that one is toast. And because I have them, 
I'll put a new one on, but you could just bend that back. We're gonna use the same blade that we had. It's nice and shined up on both sides. That came out really nice. Is I'm gonna put a swivel on here because I always like to put swivels on my spinners. So we bend it, put our swivel on, put it in here, twist it up, all done. Just like that. And then we go ahead, toss a hook on there, crimp it down with your pliers, and you're done. Spinner is complete. I like to run single hooks on my spinners and spoons, so this should work pretty good. So this Les Davis spoon came out great. The finish on it looks really good. Put the eye on there. I think that's about what the old paint scheme looked like. The back is still nice and shiny. Bigger spoon that we painted the brown trout color actually came out really nice. That's nice and painted up, looks good. Pink and chartreuse. Uh, the blade, uh, if this video does really well and you guys like this type of stuff, I'll probably go out and uh, I'll try to buy some more, you know, Dremel accessories, some uh, buffing wheels and things like that, that I can really make these things look new again. Um, but I just used what I had, I wasn't gonna buy anything. Just like that, spinner, back in business, baby. All right guys, so all the lures have been restored and they're looking pretty dang good. I'm thinking we're gonna be able to catch some fish on them today. Start out with a spinner here. Start out with this Vibrex spinner. It's a little bit bigger. Maybe I'll get some of the bigger fish to come in. By the way, I got these new Tide V waders on. Fish. Okay. On the Vibrex, baby. I know this video might not be very good. I'm right into the sunshine here. Eh? Ooh, he doesn't like it. What do we got? There we go. That's a fat boy. There we go. Check that out. Sick. These colors. Anyways. See you, bud. Thanks. Alright, guys. So like I was saying, I, I got these tied wee waders sent to me the other day for free by the company. Uh, they reached out to me, asked if I wanted to try them out. And they're actually pretty sweet. They're like a budget waiter, I would say. 65 to 100 dollars depending on what size you get so, uh, you just gotta buy a set of boots for them and these things are these things have been awesome they haven't leaked yet been using them for almost a month and can't complain i'll leave them down in the description below so you guys can find them if you're interested i really didn't expect to get that fish right off the bat with this spinner so i'm gonna toss it a few more times maybe we can get another fish or two on it Cast out in this deeper water. Man, that spinner, that thing casts good. If you guys are interested, I'm using my uh, JT Panhandler seven foot ultra light rod here. I'll link it down in the description below. Looks like we got another another trout on here. Um, there'll be a promo code down in the description below if you guys want to buy this rod for yourself. I'll give you a little bit of money off and it also helps me out. So go check it out. It's an awesome rod. What do we got here? What do we got? What do we got? A splake. We have a splake. And if you guys don't know what a splake is, it's a cross between a brook trout and a lake trout. So this is just a little guy here. A little splake. So we're we'll just let them go right here. They're pretty aggressive. They can fight pretty hard. All right, guys, so we know the Vibrex spinner works. I think we're gonna switch over now. We've got two fish on that. I think we'll switch over to something else and uh, see if we can get hooked up on one of these other lures. So the one that I'm most curious about is gonna be this brown trout spoon. It's a bigger profile and uh, might get less hits on it. So while the fish seem to be biting right here, I'm gonna to toss this on, see if we can get a hit on this thing. If you guys wanna watch a uh, how to fish spoons for trout video, I did a video on that a while ago. I'll pop it up right here so you guys can click on that, but make sure you finish watching this video first. 
Spoons are definitely my favorite way to catch trout. Oh, damn, dude, I just lost one. They had to really finesse it. Dude, they don't like that fast retrieve. Like that slow, fluttery action. There's one. Yup. Oh yeah, dude. That feels like a decent fish, too. Right into the sunset, baby. What's going on with this? It's a pretty nice fish. <laughs> pretty nice stocked fish, man. Big spoons catch big fish. Jeez. Come on, buddy. That's a nice. That's a nice. Oh man, dude, that's a slob. And <laughs> that, but we just caught this guy on the, the brown trout. Wait till you see this guy. I mean, look at that thing. <laughs> Freaking big boy, wide. Look at him. <laughs> Come on, buddy. You're all set. Ooh. Did not expect a big, fat brook trout like that, but that's sometimes what happens when you switch up to a bigger spoon. Sometimes you can weed out some of the smaller fish with it, but I think I might cast around a little bit more, see if I can, if there's any more of those bigger ones swimming around. And then we'll uh, switch over to something else, see if we can keep chipping away at these things. Man, that, that last one, he just picked it right up off bottom, and it was fluttering down real nice. Another one right there. That's erratic. That feels like a splake. Whoa. Do we have another big one on or what? These splake can be pretty aggressive too. A little humpback. <laughs> oh my god, dude. It's another big one. What the heck? Alright, check this guy out, guys. His bright red belly on him. Suck. <laughs> he hit that spoon so good. I just can't stop with this big spoon. I want to see if there's even bigger fish right in here. The first two that we hooked were, you know, smaller, average size. Got that one splake. But. Bigger spoons calling out the bigger fish, man. Again? This one I don't think is as big. But I could be wrong. <laughs> Still damaged it though. Wow, look at the colors. Got a nice little brookie. See you, bud. All right, guys, so you can see it's almost dark here. There's still fish jumping behind me. I don't know why they wouldn't bite, but anyways, we caught fish on the brown trout spoon and the Vibrook spinner right off the bat. So we still have to catch fish on the uh, Les Davis spoon and the stupid rooster tail right here. <laughs> so um, we're gonna fast forward a couple days and we'll go to the river, go out in the raft with Josh and uh, see if we can get it done. So we'll see you guys there in just a minute. All right, guys, so here we are at the river. I got the other couple lures here that we still gotta try to catch fish on. The spoon and the rooster tail. We're gonna take the raft out. It's gonna be sick. It's uh, water's a little high right here, but we're gonna go through these rapids, go set up on a couple spots, see if we can get some fish on those. Okay, so I gotta catch a fish on this rooster tail <laughs> that we repainted. Let's see if we can get something on this. Is this it? Oh, I got one. 
that one on the rooster tail. It's not big, whatever it is. I don't think. I think it might be a bass, Josh. I'm not even kidding you. It's November right now. It does. It feels very small. No, it's a trout. It's a brown. No, I got it. <laughs> I thought it was going to be smaller than that. Oh, come on. Come on. All right. All right. On the pink rooster tail, a little brown. He ate it. So there we go. Knock that one off the list. We're going to switch over to the other spoon, the Les Davis spoon. Hopefully we can get a fish on that. It'll be a success. Man, he friggin' choked that whole hook. It's gone. Thanks, bud. Get bigger. We're switching out to the Les Davis spoon. Last spoon on the list to catch a fish. I wasn't recording anyway, so. Well, I just lost a fish on the old Les Davis. The old Les Go Davis. Let's Go Brandon Davis. I just had a fish on. Oh. This fish right in here. Got him. Got him. Les Davis. Let's go. Come on. Let's end this. Let's end this nightmare of a challenge. Got him. Or not. There you go. Sick. Oh, see there? It's Les Davis, baby. That was the last one we had to get a fish on. Took the longest to do. We fished it the other day. Didn't have any hits. But brown trout love orange in the fall. So figured we'd bring it here on the river. See if we get a little brown. And we did. Single hook pops right out. Give you guys another look at him. Send them home. Yeah, okay. All right, guys, so we finally finished that challenge. It took a couple days of fishing, but we got it done. It's mid-November, so it's fishing slowing down a little bit, but we're still catching them, so. Got it done on the Les Davis. Got it done on the rooster tail. Got it done on the brown trout spoon, which actually we caught quite a few fish on that. Some big ones, bigger ones. And then, of course, the old Vibrex spinner. Cool. So, so if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you like this type of lure restoration video, we'll do some more of them. And uh, see if we can find some more crappy lures on the riverbank. Because usually I just kind of throw them away, but maybe I'll start collecting them. We'll do some more stuff like this. So give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll catch you guys in the next video.